So throw your hands up and fill the next cup. Let's get this started again. Welcome everyone to Kansas Speedway for race number 15 of the season for season number 2 of the NILA Red Bull Cup Series. It will be 41 laps here at Kansas and it is crunch time. Only two races to go before the chase begins. And, there right, and right now there's only 6 spots available. And after today, depending on how Ryan Kendall finishes, that could become only four or five spots going into our uh, model club next week. It's gonna be wild. This race went, went caution free, but I upped it by up the strength by one percent. So hopefully, it, it's a little bit more at sign. Um, and tonight, with it being a special um, occasion, the penultimate race to the final race of the back of the season, I am joined by. Elijah Leonard. Hello. So Elijah, for these drivers knowing that it's, that there's only two races left and Kansas is kind of hard to pass, what are these drivers' minds going into this race knowing, especially for the drivers that are on the cut line and don't have that much space to give? Well, the answer for those four drivers, Travis Crampton, Nathan Faden, Ace Garcia, Larry Hagan, the answer is quite simple. Don't make a mistake. Be sure that you have a really good run throughout this entire race. And be sure that you run up here in the front. The guy that has the best chance of that right now is Travis Crampton because he starts third in this race. So I would definitely see him, should he get a good run, making it in somehow if he were to win or maybe make it in on points. But as far as the guys that are below 10 points, Faden, Garcia, and Hagen, uh, they're really going to have to find their way up to the front and uh, maybe see if they can get a win because I do not see them making it in just barely uh, on points. Yeah Nathan Fan, of course he is on the post so that's a crucial bonus point for him and now that means that he has a 6 point and no 8 point gap above the car but that's not much. That's only one position on the race track and, and with Kansas being so hard to pass he could get trapped on the high side and he could go all the way back but again the high side can't get one that time so it's gonna be an interesting one here at Kansas. Thing of the playoffs here are the drivers that are locked in with two races to go. Matt Gilford, Christian Russell and Raj Way are the only three drivers that have two wins this season and then Josh South, D8, Eggman Lopez, RJ Bishop, Noyan Block, Angel Baylor, Mark Davidson and Clinton Moore. Are all locked in on main, on wins. I cannot speak. Um, Ryan <laughs> Kendall has a 53 point gap. Like I said, if he gets a good enough finish here tonight, he could easily lock himself into the playoffs one way silly based off of points. Same for James Melson. He's only 42. He's 42 points in. If he's more than I think 44 or 45 points in after this race, and he will be locked in as well. Um, but those are the only two drives that are, that are in that situation. Travis Crampton, 14 points above the cutoff. Nathan Fan was 7, but now 8 points above the cutoff with, with winning the pole. Ace Garcia, 5 points in. And Lily Hagen, 4 points in. But then Adam Garcia, just 4 points out. Madison Tall, 9 points out. Trey White, 12 points out. And Ben Clouch, 14 points out. It's fairly tight. Still about 8 to 10 drives that could easily point the way in to the chase. But if we have two 
different when the two new winners in the next two races at Kansas and all club, just like we've had in the last two races, Kentucky with Angel Ovella and North Hortsboro with um, Clinton Moore, then that can change up everything. As well as Patrick Smith, he's slowly sits in points, 28 points back, but he has a win, but he has to be in the top three in points. So there's a, the playoff battle, there's the battle to get into the top three in points, and of course there's the regular season battle to win the regular season championship and to get 15 bonus points into the playoffs. It's going to be a wild one here at Kansas, and let's get these engines fired for the show, Pencil of for race number 15 of the season. And the engines have been fired here at Kansas Motor Speedway here tonight. And looks like everyone will get blown off. Hopefully. And looks like they will. So Nathan Fayne is on the pole. Josh South in second. Travis Crampton in third. Luke Wayne in fourth. Had a bad North Fort Bowl. Lots of drives had a bad North Fort Bowl. Josephine O'Neill flipped at North Fort Bowl. Um, Angel Avail in sixth. Matthew over in seventh. Zachary Delato in 8th, and then Mark Davidson and Bobby Frazier running out the top 10. So, what do you think, or well, how do you think these drivers are going to have to get it done here at Kansas, knowing that the bomb's going to be the place to be, and there will be a pit stop in this race? Well, I would just definitely have to say they, they're going to have to play their cards right, because you said it very well that the bottom is going to be one of the most preferred lines here at Kansas, but you also have to make sure that the top may have a slight advantage here at Kansas, so that's something to watch out for. Yeah, for like two, two lanes, maybe three. Here we go, Nathan Fan, Josh South, the Shell Pencil, 400, two races, two races to go before the chase begins. <clears throat> and at the stripe it's going to be barely Nathan Fan, but the race sponsor called Travis Crampton going for the race lead on lap 2 that was a very clean start by some of these drivers though um, there you see right there Nathan Fade managed to get a pretty good run up there on the top side and he's going to retain the top position but you see a little bit deeper in the field, there's a little bit of three wide action going on here. And that's something to be careful of because if you drift just too high coming off of turn four, you might scrape the wall and that's going to cause a lot of these other drivers to maybe use the apron to take evasive action. Yeah, fairly true. They have the apron. Why not lose it? Why not use it to avoid a potential crash? And right now, the second lane is passing these guys a lot because Travis Grantham Almost took the race lead away. Holy smokes, a dive bomb from Crampton. He's going to take second away. And, oh my god. Here comes probably one of the hardest drivers all summer. He won the all star race. He won Talladega. And he's been so consistent the rest of the races this summer. Really in block on the number 88. Wants to get up front. Had a eh race at North Fort Spur, But here at Kansas, he's all the way inside the top five. Yeah, William Brock, you pointed out the accomplishments that uh, that he's made that he's made so far throughout the season, and he would definitely love to add on to those accomplishments here at Kansas by maybe getting another top five, but most importantly, winning another race. That's probably what's on his mind right now. Yeah, he's all a lot to, to um into the chase. I'm pretty sure he's comfortable comfortably inside the top thirty as well. So. William Brock just wants to get another win. He knows he always has a reserve in Season 3 because he won the all stories, But he wants to steal a, 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 a reserve spot and win the championship as well. Josephine O'Neill, she flipped, which is really weird. Because Trey White just teep on her. It wasn't even that big of a hit, but Josephine O'Neill still flipped. But right now she's doing a pretty solid job winning in third. A female has yet to win in the Rebel Cup Series. Madison Tall almost won. At Watkins Glen, but got passed on the last lap on the last turn thanks to Roger Way. So we just have to wait and see if history will happen tonight. Oh, a little bit of a close call there with William Brock. Just got right up to the back end 
of Josephine O'Neill there. I thought he was going to thought he was going to bump her into the corner, maybe bump her out of the way to try to get that third spot, but uh I stand corrected. Yeah, I thought so too. But one thing that you have to watch out for is Travis Plampton cuz he loves winning the high side and right now it looks like the lanes are pretty even, but the outside lane can get a good one, at least on these flush tires. And Crampton, that third track background, he almost won that Chicago lane last season in season number one because of that third track background, so who knows if he might be able to, to get a win here tonight. Now if you hold for that, now you I'm out of nowhere. Now you also said tires. Uh, no, that's another thing that these drivers are going to have to uh, keep a very close eye on, especially some of these crew chiefs, is because tire wear, when you run wide open here at Kansas, you, you tend to cook the tire, and sometimes you tend to cook the bead, but then again, you just you just got to be careful with uh, how much tire you're using around this racetrack, because too much tire, it, it basically means that you, you're cooking, you're heating up the tires, and it could be potential to uh, some tire damage, maybe your right front going down, or any kind of damage like that, so you got to be careful of that for sure. Yeah, very true. And right there, we just saw the distinct three lines. Billy Block drive under the third lane, but immediately went down to the second lane. Zachary Deletto, we haven't seen him that much all season. Had a bad season up to this point. But my God, he is running solely inside the top 10. And Matthew Halford, speaking of Matthew Halford right now, He's trying to be the first driver in of the season to have three wins. He was up for a lot at North Fort Spool, just not but just was not able to get it done. But once again out front or towards the front I should say, here at Kansas. Side by side for the third spot. Hartford trying to get it off of Crampton. Uh, you see Crampton, he's gonna use that high side to his advantage. There it is. Just edges ahead coming out of turn two, and uh, that's that's a little bit of that experience using that high side for Travis Crampton. That's playing a big advantage for him. Yeah, of course, this is the um, Travis' second full-time season in the Red Bull Cup Series in Kansas. was on the schedule last year, so he this is, for all events, the second time here. So he knows of how to get around this place, and right now he's showing it against the rookie of Matthew Alford, and right now, um, we have um, Nathan Fayen, Travis Crampton, Mark Davison, Zachary Deletto, William Block, and Sebastian Kuklon. A lot of veterans inside the top 10, and I think that just takes it into the fact that it's the second time running here at Kansas, and for these rookies, they haven't raced here at Kansas before in these cup cars in the Rebel Cup Series. And here at uh, Kansas, this place is another track where uh, the rookies can not really kind of get behind the veterans, kind of see what they're doing, what lines they're running, and uh, try to and try to mimic those lines and uh, whatever they're doing on the racetrack. And it could pay some very big dividends here. See, we got a battle for the lead. Nine more. So for Nathan Fan, he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Still on the pole, he said um, a lap, and at this point, if he leaves. I believe 21 or 22 laps, then he will get another bonus point for leading the most laps in this race. So Nathan, Nathan Fayton doing everything that he can to possibly be the best shape going into all club next time out. But Joseph O'Neill must have spoiled that party, almost contact with Nathan Fayton. Wow. That was pretty close right there. But Nathan Fan a massive one on the outside lane. I think these tires being about halfway through this one. It's really hard to pass now. But Crampton is not going to stop. So, from here comes Mark Davidson. A driver that comes in here. 30th in the points. He is literally four points to the good right now. He's on the edge. And he, he needs a good one here tonight. And so far that's the case. Travis Crampton that almost made three wide for the race lead. But Josephine O'Neill is going to take the race lead away from Nathan Fayen. See, that's the first time that the bottom has actually played into the favor of Josephine O'Neill. And that's when the top side really started to give out for Nathan Fayen. It just was not able to use it to power back up on the outside. 
you have Ellie Two and Thousand Man tries to scram and help them out. But Nathan Fan gets a massive one in three and four and he's gonna take the way to sleep like that from the Now that is a very strong race car. Now I that it is now it is is definitely become pretty pretty apparent and pretty clear that uh, Nathan Faden has the car to beat. Yeah, that's only the second time that we've seen anyone f pass for the race lead on the inside lane. First time was Josephine O'Neill and she had help, and the second time was Nathan Faden all by himself. And now here comes Josephine O'Neill once again and Travis Crampton as well. But Crampton's gonna go up to the high side, slide job. Crampton to the inside for second. Whoa! That's a pretty gutsy move there by Josephine O'Neill. And I'm gonna say, the more that these three battle for uh, for whatever position that they're battling for, first or second, that's reeling in the 99, the 6, and the 7 as well. Yeah, and that's not what they want to do. But now, the dominant card of the day so far is has fallen back to third. Oh, contact! Crampton twice giving the bumper to Josephine O'Neill, but was not able to do it. It was a little close there. Close call for both of those drivers, but uh, they managed to sort it out, and Crampton is going to tuck right back in in second and uh, see if he can try it again. Maybe in the next corner, maybe the next time around. And I honestly think the inside lane is now the place to be on old tires. About 20 laps on these tires. And Mont Davidson going for second, and here comes Luke coming out of nowhere in the number six. Lots of force up front right now. Actually, not really. Maybe the, eh. I was about to say, maybe the force probably has something figured out here. Yeah, I mean, there's three fours in the top seven, and then there's four Chevys in the top seven. Actually, out of the top eight, there's four fours and four Chevys. And now in the top ten, there's five Chevys, so. And the first tutorial is not until you get to Matthew Alford in tenth, so. It looks like the Fords and Chevys have something figured out here tonight at Kansas Speedway. <coughs> Pretty decent gap there for uh, Josephine O'Neill. Just about a quarter of a second according to the scoring, but uh, might have to might want to watch and see now because these drivers may have to come in really soon. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I'd say probably about five to seven, maybe eight laps until we have to pit. About lap twenty-eight to thirty, and if it being I'm somewhere around there, and if it only being a forty-one lap race, it's gonna be a one-stop strategy like it normally is in the Webber Cup Series. But if it being a shorter race than last year, about thirteen shorter laps, you ha you, it's more important now for you to get a better pit stop this time than what it was last year. And that could be more true to anything. Yeah, fairly true. Right now, Call of Reason is last right now. Um, Christian Russell not having a good day back here. Um, three wide back in here as well. But right now, it's all Josephine O'Neill, Balfour's third between two veterans, Delello and Davison. <coughs> this is pretty intense battle for third, but uh, looks like looks like Zachary Delello's gonna win that fight for the third spot. And now here comes Faden to try to take fourth away. And right now, four out of the top five for all veterans, so only Rookie in the top five is Josephine O'Neill in that number 38. Huge one for Mount Davidson, and he's going to take the third away. She takes it right back. Come on board with Travis Brampton with the shell pencil on board. See if he can close in on Josephine O'Neill here. And looks like he is. Now what Travis needs to do in order to... Uh get up to the back end, which he's done pretty much, is he just needs to stay right tucked in in that back end, and you see he's going to dive to the inside to take over the race lead, at least try to. And it looks like I he think will. He's got it. And he does. Travis Crampton takes the race lead, 
The shell pencil in the car is out front, and that might have been the move of the race depending on how pit stops go. Because the field is going to get really spread out after pit stops, and it's going to be hard to even get up to possibly the leader if you don't get a good pit stop. And you also have to watch out for something else during pit stops. Some of these drivers, uh, when they merge back up on the racetrack, sometimes their spotters may not be able to tell them that they're clear, and they might merge back right up into traffic, and it could cause a huge wreck. And speaking of pit stops, it looks like six or seven drivers are in that last time by, and now pit stops have started. Tall staying looks out. Looks like Josephine O'Neill's coming in. Tall staying out in the number 42. So is a couple other guys as well. But most of the field's pitting on here on that 28. Tall. That's a, that's a big line of cars. That's a big crowd. Yeah, it is. Tall. Am Garcia. He needs a great one. Tall needs a good one. Colton Yo. Stay out. Marjorie stay out. Ben Crouch. Um, and Kashawn Richardson all stayed out in actual a extra lap. It looks like everyone will yeah, pit this time by, though. And they will. Yeah. yeah, and that means everybody now is going to be on pit road, and everybody would have completed this cycle of green flag stop. Now, the question is, is this going to lead, probably cycle back to Travis Crampton or maybe Nathan Baird, or Nathan Faden, sorry, not Nathan Baird. So we're, <laughs> we're just going to see what happens here. Yeah, we just have to wait and see. If there's Nathan Faden right there. And... Now, is, did Josh Self get one heck of a pit stop, or is he a lap down? I have to wait and see here. It could be possible strategy. Maybe strategy, because he looks really slow. And Crampton's just going to blow on by, so I don't know if Self tried t taking a gamble or what, but he looks really slow right now. You know, whatever gamble it was that he probably took, it, it 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 most likely it paid off as far as track position is concerned, but it's not going to pay off as far as getting to the lead is concerned. Yeah, that's for sure. It looks like that tall is absolutely gone. Five, almost. Well, from the looks of it, almost six seconds on the number twenty. Yeah, almost a six second gap to, from first to third, and almost a five second gap from first to second. Tall playing strategy here, and that's what I'm talking about. She comes in here nine points out of the cutoff, and Chip Ganassi Racing might have just pulled the rabbit of a hat of the season so far, but there's still 11 laps to go, and Travis Crampton gained almost a second last time by. So I think they must have went yeah, with the strategy, just like South did. Yeah, I think that strategy so far has paid off, paid off getting to the front and uh, leading laps. That's what Madison Tall is pretty much wanting to do, but also she's wanting to win the race. But the problem is you have a really fast Travis Crampton coming up behind her. And I believe she, he might gain another full second here, maybe half second. We're going to see here. Yeah, Tall is running a 31-1-5, and Crampton ran the 29-8-2. It's a Tall. Oh, yes. Either she only took two tires, or she took no tires at all. But I don't know if that's going to work out. Maybe she just took fuel. Uh, yeah, maybe. But Crampton, with, that four t with those four tires, y you see him in the background right there. Now it's down to a 1.6 second gap. Gained his second last time by. Yeah, Crampton can pretty much run hard on the tires that he has right now. As far as for Madison Tall, we can see it. She has to be extra careful on those tires because you never know if uh, she could possibly uh, have a right front go down or anything like that. But any as as far as the bigger picture is, Tall is just trying to, her best to at least finish the race. If not, if her gamble plays off, maybe she could win the event. Yeah, right now, I, I give a credit in her team because, like, this is strategy. She knows that they are um, nine points out, and as you see Crampton closing in like like a rocket ship, 
I don't think she's going to be able to get the win, but she might be able to get a top 10, though, and that's what she needs with two races to go. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the thing that matters here if she wants to get into the chase. But here comes Crampton. And Crampton just blows by Tall with ease. It does not look like history will be made, and the female will not win here today. But great strategy for Tall, nevertheless. But now... Doletto up to second. He's in a must-win situation. I, I've not seen him all year long. And, and Josephine O'Neill, who knows, she could still have a shot. So it's not over. It all depends of how fast Crampton's going compared to these guys. And it also depends on when a caution comes out. Because I, I believe at this point, we're within that five-to-go range. So if a caution were to come out, that could spell some really big news for Travis Crampton. Yeah, and because we don't have any green light checkers, or whatever, like, what my Johnson used to do, the race will be over. So, like, for Quentin, sure, he will not want to win the race on the caution, but I'm sure he will not mind at, at all at the same time. A win is a win. But it, it, he might not get the win, because Zachary Doretto is up to second now. Yeah, it looks like Delolo's starting to close in just a little bit. Yeah, Crampton doesn't... See what that gap is going to be coming to the line. Yeah, Crampton has no help, and Delolo has some help. Never mind, it's 2.23 seconds. Oh! Still oh! Advantage. That's it. Yeah, that's it, right there. Looks like it was for Tyler Fink in the number 72. Going into turn number one and two. That's going to end it. And 12 is cramped. And as long as he does not have a mechanical issue on these pace laps. He's going to win. And lock himself into the chase. Wow. It's a pretty impressive end to the race. But uh, as I said earlier, a win is a win. You got to get it however you can get it. Yeah, and coming into this race... Crampton, he's been really consistent this season. He's always been in, like inside the top 20 all season long. And tonight was probably one of his best shots. Maybe all club as well. But with that race being so crazy, he knew this was probably going to be his best shot if he wanted to win. Or at, at least be more comfortable. Because all club, they will go 3, 4, even 5 wide out. It, I mean... And in a big pack, so stuff can go down in the hole, and Crampton looks like is going to, to prevail here tonight. And a very good drive for Travis Crampton. And you also still, as you said before, you have to give props to uh, Madison Tall for really being pretty gutsy on the strategy, and uh, it paid off getting to the front. But uh, either way, even though she's not going to win the race, she's still going to get a top five finish out of this. Yeah, yeah, and. Same with Nathan Fayan. Nathan Fayan did one hell of a job tonight. Still on the pole lean, I I think the most laps either Fayan or um, Crampton are gonna, is going to be credited for the most laps led tonight. But Fayan, Tall, Crampton, all great ones here tonight, and that's what they need because everyone knows all club is unpredictable. And it can change the fate on a dime. So, before we get to the final lap, let's briefly see if what happened to Blau the first and only caution of the day in the Shell Prince Oil 400. Okay, so this is what happened to Blau the first and only caution of the day. Tyler Fink, it looked like he slowed down a little bit going into turn 1 and 2. And Oveo, he tried avoiding him, but nowhere to go, slid up the waist track. And just... Clipped his corner panel and around he went. Big shot into the outside wall. And then Adam Garcia just got a little piece of it. But for the most part, he was going. He is fine. But a tough way for Tyler Fink running inside the top 20. He's not at the best of seasons. So that would have been a great one for him. But unfortunately, for that new sponsor on the call, it's not going to be a good night for that 72 team.
All right, so this is getting down into turn one. You see Fink slow down a little bit. Angel of Air slid up. And the thing is, when you go into the corner like that, you're just carrying a huge amount of speed, and Olvera couldn't do anything about it. And you also saw Adam Garcia just get a small piece of that. But still a very tough break for Tyler Fink. He got the worst end of that one, and uh, he's not going to get a not going to get a very good finish out of this. Yeah, he might even finish dead last because of it. Just have to wait and see. But a heartbreak for Tyler Fink. But you know who is not a heartbreak too. Travis Crampton in the number 22. Let's go to the final lap, Peter. And the show points are well for one at Kansas. And welcome back here at Kansas Speedway. And we are here on the final lap. On the pace lap. I'm fortunate to have this race end under caution. But it was a pretty good race. A lot better than last year. Um, last year this race almost put, put me to sleep. Because um, it, <laughs> it was dominated by one person. This year it was dominated to... And not only like Donnie, but it was like between Crampton and Faden and um, O'Neill and Delello and drivers like that. So, and we had strategy with Tall. So, a lot more in, um, entertaining race than last year. Um, and for Travis Crampton in the Shell Pennsylvania 400, Crampton is going to get it done in the Shell Pennsylvania car. A very good run here for Travis Crampton, nonetheless, and uh, this definitely is going to be a huge confidence booster going into, uh, I believe we're going to Auto Club next, correct? Yep, Auto Club, and then the chase. Yeah, and that's going to be a huge confidence booster for him, so here we come. And Travis Crampton is official the win. The show Prince of Earth won here at Kansas. No mechanical issues, no blow-ups under caution, and Travis Crampton is locked into the chase for season number two of the Weapon Cup series. And that's three first time winners of the season. We had um, Angel Avail win at Kentucky. We had Quentin Moore win at North Fortsboro. And now we have Travis Crampton win here at Kansas. So now, depending on how things all stack up, there's only five, four or five spots left in the, the chase. But ne nevertheless, great one from Travis Crampton. Here tonight at Kansas, gets the fit three, and I believe his first career cup win, at least, here on the channel. No, definitely not his first win, cause, but his first cup win. Delello second, Josephine O'Neill third, great one for after f going upside down at, at, the tw at um, North Fort Spur last time out. Nathan Fane in fourth, Madison Tall in fifth, great strategy by her, and what do you know, we only block the dot, the Hottest driver all summer, most consistent driver all summer, William Block in Subking in sixth, William uh, um, White Walker in seventh, Kuklon in eighth, Clifton out of nowhere inside the top ten, great one for the um, Australian, and then Fogus rounds out the top ten, Luke Lee, Frazier, Eli Bright out of nowhere, a great one for him, South in fourteenth, um, Roger in fifteenth, Richardson in 16th, Yo 17th, Hulford 18th, Elvira 19th, and Davidson rounds out the top 20. That's a great one for Davidson as well, because he was right on the um, cut line of making it into the chase for, for, because of the, the 30, top 30 in points. So, great one for him. Um, great one for Patrick Smith as well. He was 36 in points, 28 points back. So... Have to wait and see if how that shapes up for him. And mid, oh no, Juan Ryan Kendall got 39th. That's not of what yeah, he. That's that's not what he needed. That's that has bad news written all over it, and uh, uh, he he was 53 points coming in, but. Uh, time this is pretty much going to say that uh, he's probably going to be either in a must win situation or going to really have to fight hard to keep his uh, chase hopes alive he's probably not going to be a must win but it's probably going to be like instead of 53 points probably going to be like 10 15 20 points and with the way our club is you can lose that point lead or points gap in a heartbeat so 
Nate Smith, so, so um, Mike Kendall had one job to do here tonight, and that was to get a good one, and he doesn't, so he's not going to be locked in to the Shades Fever, um, clinching it because of points. But, oh, neither is James Selson, though, because he finished 30 second, two jobs that would have the best shot at maybe clinching the spots. I'm not going to do it. So all of them... It's going to be a very exciting next time out. Um, what's your final thoughts here at Kansas for the show? Plans of one of you tonight, I'm Roger. I would definitely have to say that this race was very, very entertaining. We saw some really good passes for the lead. We saw the outside line work early in the going. Then the groove shifted down to the inside. Had some really good strategy. I think I already pointed that out uh, with Josephine O'Neill getting to the lead, but uh, still coming out with a really good finish after all that. And... Uh, Saw some pretty good, saw some really, really good action here at Kansas, I will have to say. Yeah, a lot better than what I thought. The whole reason why that I bought I mean, Elijah up in the booth was one, I, I'm tired. I'm tired. Two, I, this is the second race I've done in one day, and three, I had, I, I had zero expectations for Kansas, but it, it was better than what I thought, and um, thanks for joining me up in the booth for this one, I mean, Elijah. Anytime, anytime. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for, for watching here for the show plans of of London. Um, by the way, it's not Rick because the show plans of called one. Um, <laughs> just wanted to point that out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. For Elijah Leonard, I'm in a freaking void to AK and Nathan Station. The points, the regular season points, the playoff points, rookie of the year points, and fun outs. Okay, I'll uh, coming up next. One race remains before we set the, si the field of 16 and the 16 guys that have a shot at the championship going out in New Rapids. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. For Elijah and I'm Nathan Satan. Congrats to Travis Cranston on getting his first three Wrestle Cup series win, if I remember the way. And I will see you guys next time out in a few days at our show club to see if who is final. To see if the 16 will be. Until then, bye!